Hey everyone! Today we are taking a look at poetry elements. Yesterday and the past week we've been really trying to dig into poetry, try to understand what it's all about, and to really get you guys excited about it, and to explore all of the parts about poetry so that we can eventually create our own poems. Um, poetry is just a really great way to write and writing with, you know, some type of creative expression. So you're really creatively just trying to think of a funny way or a sad way, or maybe it's just like full of love and happiness. Um, and you're really just trying to express your emotions while you're writing. And right now we really feel like this is a great time to be talking about poetry because, you know, during all of this um, situation that we're in right now, we might have a lot of different feelings that we're feeling. A lot of confusing feelings, a lot of feelings that it would be really helpful to put down and write down in words. And there's really no better way to do that than by writing poetry. So we're going to dig into the poetry elements. And the poetry elements are different things that are going to be in poetry that you can look for and start to say, oh, hey, that is, that's something that I always see in a poem and it has a specific name for it. So these are the elements of poetry and we're going to take a look at three today. So our first one that we're going to look at is alliteration. Alliteration is the repetition of the beginning consonant sounds and words. So we're really looking at that first letter. And does that first letter sound the same and appear the most in that sentence? So I'm going to read this example to you. Slimy slug slither slowly on the sidewalk. So as you can see, one, two, three, four, five words in that sentence start with an S. So whenever you see that in a poem or maybe just randomly somewhere, you're going to say, you know what, that's alliteration and that is a poetry element. Try to say slimy sl slug slither slowly on the sidewalk 10 times fast. That's a tricky one. Our next element that we are going to look at today is imagery. So with imagery, you will find words or phrases that have vivid descriptions that appeal to the five senses. It creates a picture in the reader's mind. So when we think about our five senses, we're thinking about, hmm, how are they making us create a picture in our mind by using the five senses? So they're gonna be writing words or phrases that describe our sight, maybe something we see, something we hear, that we smell, that we can taste, or that we can touch because we know that those are our five senses. An example of imagery would be, the thick fuzzy coat was a blessing in the winter blizzard. So they're really looking at that thick fuzzy coat. They're really describing that coat and making that picture in our mind. Um, and our last one for today that we're going to take a look at is a metaphor. Metaphor. A metaphor is a comparison of two different things. It is like a simile without like or as. So within the next couple days, we will talk more about what a simile is. But a metaphor is a comparison of two different things. But you're not using like or as when you compare these two things. So for example, a good laugh is sunshine in a house. So you're really trying to make a comparison and you want it to have like that great creativity with it as well. So a good life, a good laugh, sorry, is sunshine in a house. So you're really getting into that poetic um, type of description when you're writing and meta using metaphors. And I'm going to show you guys more examples of these three elements. So right here we have tone, alliteration, and personification. 
but we're only looking at the yellow. We're only seeing what alliteration is in this poem. So that first sentence right here says, a red ripping roar rages. So there again, we have the R's, one, two, three, four different R words. The R's make the same sound and they are repeating themselves in this sentence. And then we go down here where the other yellow one is because we know the yellow is alliteration and that's all we're focusing on for this one. Cold, coarse, clammy fingers. So again, that first letter, we have those C words. Cold, coarse, clammy fingers. And they're describing the way that the fingers are with all letter C words. So that's what we have for alliteration. Alliteration is pretty easy. Um, when you look over to the next one, imagery, let's see how this poem really digs into our senses and makes it very vivid and descriptive. So it's called darkness. I was floating around the world with darkness in my eyes when the blinding moon appeared through the clouds in the skies. Is there hope creeping in me? Do I still need to hide? I'll let the world embrace me until my struggles subside. So we're looking at the way that they are using our senses. We have different ways that they are doing that in this poem with the blinding moon really describing how that looked in the sky. Um, you know, thinking about the world embracing me. So that would be more like a touch because that the world is just, you know, taking you in. Kind of, I like to think of it as like kind of hugging you until your struggles subside, you know, until you're happy again and everything bad goes away. So imagery is hard because you really got to think deep and really try to get that vivid description of those senses. And metaphor. Metaphor is our last one for today. So remember, metaphor is like a simile. We'll talk about similes later. But you're doing a comparison and you're not using like or as. So this one's called sweet happiness. Happiness is a marshmallow. Sweet, fluffy, and light. Put them on a fire, smiling on every bite. So that one was really cute. And it did not have like or as in it at all. It's telling you what, what happiness is compared to a marshmallow. So comparing happiness and a marshmallow. Then we have down here another metaphor, dripping sadness. Sadness is a leaking faucet. Money keeps dripping away. Learn to work on problems or shed tears while you pay. So again, they're kind of thinking about comparing problems and sadness to money and that one's a little bit more deep, but again, it's not using like or as when it's comparing something in a poem. So your job today, and this will be linked in Seesaw just like our template was yesterday. So it says write an example of each below. So you're going to write me an example, use the text box, write an example of alliteration, of imagery, and of a metaphor. So you can just do one sentence of each, that's fine. If you wanna make multiple examples, that is fine too. Um, if you're like, you know what, I really understand this and I'm going to try to challenge myself, then I suggest absolutely try to come up with more than one. But you're only required to come up with one. And I am gonna just go right back to the beginning slide so you can kinda see how they did it here they have their examples in blue. So if that helps you, um, make sure you come back to the video and look for these different examples in here, okay? So you don't wanna put the same ones that they gave us. You want to create your own. All right, I hope you guys have fun with this and I can't wait to see what you guys come up with.